Adi Parva is the first of the 18 Parvas of the great epic of Mahabharata. It is the first book and also considered to be the book of beginning. It deals with the initiation of this great Indian epic. In this first Parva, it is presented how the Mahabharata was narrated by Sauti, who was assembled by Rishis at Naimisharanya. Furthermore, the narration of the Mahabharata at the Sarpasatra of Janamajaya by Vaisampayana at Taxila has also acquired much importance. The history of Bharata's race has also been described in the Adi Parva in detail. Yes, it delves deep into the lineage and the significant events that shaped the epic. This parva comprises of the first 19 of the 100 sub-parvas in Mahabharata. Mahabharata is one of the factors that contributed to the growth of Hindu culture in India. It is being said that the Mahabharata exerts remarkable cultural influence throughout the Indian peninsula. This timeless creation by sage Veda Vyasa is divided into 18 books or chapters, which came to be called as the 18 parvas of Mahabharata. And the 18 parvas are further subdivided into 100 subparvas, of which the first 19 subparvas are included in the Adi Parva. The early life of the princes of the two princely families of the Pandavas and the Kauravas is portrayed in this Parva of Mahabharata. The book first describes in detail about the ancestors of the great brothers. It describes the incident at Varanasi where a palace was constructed mainly with the use of lark, a highly inflammable material. The Pandavas were told very highly of Banaras and about the newly constructed palace for them. Ultimately, the five brothers and their mother Kunti went to live in that beautiful palace. When the Pandavas came to know the intention of Duryodhana, they were helped by one of the servants of Vidura, who constructed an underground tunnel from that palace to a nearby forest. One night, they escaped through the tunnel with their mother after setting fire in the house of Lak. Thus, the Pandavas escaped from the Lakshagriha, and while they were in the forest, Bhima killed the Rakshasa named Hidimba and married his sister Hidimbi. While the Pandavas lived in the house of a Brahmin in a village after their escape from the Lakshagriha, they came to know about a Rakshasa by the name of Vaka, who lived close to the village. The Rakshasa was given a cart full of rice, two buffaloes, and a human being to eat. The villagers offer those things in turn, so the turn of a family comes after several years. When Kunti came to know of it, she ordered Bhima to go with the cart. Bhima obeyed the orders of his mother and killed the Rakshasa Vaka. The Swayamvara of Draupadi has also been described in the Adi Parva. While the Pandavas were living with their mother in the guise of Brahmans in the town of Ikachakra, there came one staunch friend and another out of their past life to visit them quietly. From one of those friends they heard that Drupada, the king of Panchala, had announced the Swayamvara of his beautiful daughter Draupadi. Arjuna won Draupadi in the Swayamvara, and as per the instructions of Kunti, all the five brothers married Draupadi. The Pandavas lived with Draupadi and their mother Kunti in a village. They had made an agreement that the five brothers would live with Draupadi one by one, and it started with Yudhisthir. Once there came a Brahmin whose cattle was carried away by some thieves and he cried before Arjuna for help. Arjuna, thus without any thought, entered the chamber where Yudhisthir and Draupadi were sitting and took his bow and arrow. He helped the Brahmin get back his cattle. Thus, Arjuna, according to the rule, went to the forest for 12 years. This section of the Mahabharata also speaks about the marriage of Subhadra with Arjuna. The Adi Parva gives an account of the early life of the Pandavas and the Kauravas and the training of the princes under the guidance of Guru Dronacharya. The first Parva of the epic Mahabharata commences with the introduction of Ugrasrava the son of Lomaharshana, surnamed as Sauti. Sauti was well versed in the Puranas, and once he approached the great sages of rigid vows in the forest of Naimisha. Having been entertained with due obedience by those holy men, he went on to recite the ascetic's narrations. At his description, he recollected his assembly of meditative munis. 
It is also mentioned in the Adi Parva that the sacred and wonderful stories of Mahabharata were recited in full by Vaisampayana at the snake sacrifice of the royal sage Janamajiya. Yes, indeed. The entire epic was narrated by me, Vaisampayana, at that grand event. <laughs>